The last P I'm going to talk about is pycnometry. So pycnometry is a pressure measurement. Uh, it's a pressure or a volume measurement. So in pycnometry, we're looking at the Archimedes principle of fluid displacement to measure the volume occupied by an irregular shape. Typically, what we do is we use gas pycnometry uh, because we can use helium gas. It penetrates even the smallest pores and eliminates any surface chemistry effects here. We use the Anton Parr UltraPIC uh, 5000 for gas pycnometry. And so it's a little benchtop tool, very convenient. And so I can't really cut it up and show you, but I can give you a schematic of what it looks like on the inside. So we put our sample in a chamber and there's a reference chamber of known volume. And then there's pressure, uh, pressure gauges basically in between. So how does pycnometry work? Pycnometry works by measuring a pressure drop across the system. So we start by filling a sample chamber of known volume with a gas, with helium gas at a specific pressure. So the helium is gonna fill all the empty space inside the sample chamber, including the pores of the material. We wait for the pressure to stabilize and we record that value. Then we open up a valve in between the sample chamber and the reference chamber, and that allows the gas to expand. At that point, we measure the pressure, we wait for it to stabilize, and then we record that value. What we're gonna do in the measurement is compare the pressure drop between an empty sample chamber and a full sample chamber. And that pressure differential, we can use it to calculate the volume of the sample, the pycnometric volume, uh, which is occupied by our sample. And so Chris promised, I think in our uh, little blurb about the talk to give you the deep, dark, hidden secret of pycnometry. And the secret, it's not that secret if I've laid it out in this way, is that we're measuring the volume. We're measuring a pressure drop and a volume of the sample. We're not directly measuring density. We can calculate the density because we know the mass of the sample. 